Hi there, I'm uh, Martin Warren, I'm uh, Chief Executive of the charity Butterfly Conservation uh, and we're going to have a look around the Waitrose Estate here at Leckford Farm. We're going to have a look for uh, butterflies uh, and a lot of the other insects that are being encouraged here in the field margins and on some of the nice grassland that there is around the farm. I'm Glenn Evans, I'm uh, Chairman of the John Lewis Trust. We've been uh, monitoring uh, butterflies here for over 25 years. Um, looking at uh, how the butterf different butterflies fare on the uh, parts of the estate uh, and we've also been looking at moths. Well I think that it's critically important that we have a wide range of our native species are given the best opportunity to thrive and what I'm very conscious of is over the last few decades, perhaps even centuries, we've lost an enormous number of our native species. But actually, by reintroducing the, uh, the climate conditions and the species on which they fed, you can begin to reintroduce species that may have been gone for many, many years. My charity, Butterfly Conservation, uh, we look after uh, butterflies and moths around the UK and we give advice to farmers like the Leckford Estate uh, to how to encourage butterflies and moths on their farms. And it's really great to see some of the examples here of some really good uh, habitat management uh, for insects and pollinators uh, on this estate. We're very lucky to have very particular chalk downland which can be a fantastic home to butterflies, moths, all sorts of pollinators. We have a number of national rarities and uh, some of those have uh, declined enormously along with the national trends but we've also seen some new species arrive perhaps uh, as a result of climate change we don't really know. So I'm look really looking forward to today and uh, we're hopefully going to see some really nice species. Every butterfly feeds on a different food plant so you've got 50 butterflies at least 50 different food plants so that's where, you know, if you want to conserve all your butterflies, you need you all the different food plants as well as the nectar sources for the adults. So they're quite complicated things to look after, but of course nature does it naturally. Obviously if you've got nice wildflower grass and with lots of different species, um, each butterfly can find its own little niche within it. Um, nearly all the butterflies that you see in your garden are breeding on a piece of farmland near you. Mm -hmm. So very few actually breed in gardens but they feed on in the countryside around where you live. So if you see butterflies in your garden, you've got the local farmers to thank and nettles are just an important um, food plant for them. Here's a, here's a, a nettle patch which has probably been cut about um, a, a month ago and it's got the young growth that the uh, tortoiseshells really like. So they lay on young growth. So we always advise farmers to um, cut a, a percentage, perhaps half of their nettles every June and that will be good food for the next generation of tortoiseshells later in the year. What you just have to do, don't cut them down. I mean, don't destroy them, don't spray them. If you've got a little corner with nettles, quite simple, it's not doing any harm. It's just a benign plant, but it's very important for butterflies. And that, uh, that's a scarlet tiger, which is the uh, a day-flying moth, uh, and it's really spreading northwards now rapidly with climate change. So one of the other great things about butterflies and moths, they really show you how the climate's changing. It's a thing called a gatekeeper, and that's one that's a really common widespread farmland butterfly, feeds on grasses, but often along hedgerows. And so that's the orangey brown one here that they're feeding on the bramble on with the dot yep. it's called an eye spot. The brimstone butterfly is uh, a beautiful yellow butterfly that flies in the spring, also again later in the summer. Uh, and it feeds on two plants of buckthorn, alder buckthorn and purging buckthorn. And the caterpillars need that if the butterfly is going to survive. So planting buckthorn in your garden is a way of helping brimstones. And this is a typical field margin. It's a, a six metre wide field margin, been planted with wild flowers. And so it's got quite a lot of nectar sources. We can see lots of butterflies flying around in it. The land take out of this field as a whole is minuscule, you know, it's just a six metre strip around quite a big field. So it's not doing much to um, reduce the productivity of the field, but it's doing a huge amount for biodiversity and a huge amount for pollinators. So there's lots of insects here, uh, butterflies flying around, I can see some bees and some day flying moths here. This is a marbled white and uh, it's a uh, good sign in a field margin because it means that there's um, quite a variety of grasses for the caterpillars to feed on and some nectar sources available for the adults. We really can combine farming and nature, it's not a difficult thing to do. 
benefits. And certainly through my work on the Environmental Audit Committee, I'm really conscious of how important it is that we have the National Pollinator Strategy, that we work to make sure that the pesticides that are being used are not impacting our pollinators in a negative fashion. And critically, what I think we're all beginning to understand is that all of life, not just our food, but every species that we see, rests on having pollinators right down at the bottom, making sure that there are plants growing and that there are our food stocks for every species that there is. So actually the, the whole pollinator strategy is a real backbone to our flora and fauna life and it's critically important that we make sure that the strategy delivers what we expect it to.